In this video, we're going to talk about the average, the average if, and the average ifs function found in Excel. If you look at this worksheet, there's not a lot, whole lot of special things going on. You have some food items, some stores, the price of the items, and where it can be found in the stores. So let's go ahead and, and look at the different functions that can be found in Excel. Uh, my cursor is currently in G4, and the, the little side heading is a manual calculation. So I'm going to show you how to manually calculate this um, instead of using a predefined function that Excel has. Um, not often are you going to want to do this, but sometimes we like to make our life a little bit more difficult than it has to be. And so what we're going to do is click the equal sign, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, key in C2. C2 is the price of the first item in store A, and I'm going to hit the plus sign, and I'm going to do C3, and I'm going to do that for every cell for store A. And once you're done keying all those cells, if you look over here, Excel uh, color coordinates those cells so we can kind of identify what's going on here as far as what's in this, this function. Uh, kind of just shows you those different things. Now I'm going to hit the slash on my keyboard for division. And there are eight items listed, so I'm going to key in the number eight. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And if you look at it, you're like $22. That doesn't seem right, and it's not. When you're manually hand keying in uh, calculations for Excel, uh, a, something you want to remember is the order of operations. You probably memorized as a kid the little acronym uh, PEMDAS, or the, the little phrase, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, uh, to remember what you should be doing first, like exponents and parentheses, multiplication, division. And so if you look at this, this calculation we have going on, um, that's not what we need. We actually need to put parentheses. And what I've done is my cursor's in, in G4, and I just went ahead and put my cursor in the uh, formula bar here at the top. I need to key in uh, parentheses around my addition here because we need Excel to do all, the entire addition calculation before we divide. Now that I key those in, if I hit Enter, and it tells me, it recalculates and tells me that the average price is $3.03. This could have been done so much quicker, so much easier if I would have just used the average function in Excel. And so with my cursor in G5, I'm going to go ahead and click this button here. There are a few ways to do this, but this is my easy way of doing it. I'm going to go ahead and click Insert Function. Here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and type in the average, click Go. And it pulls up down here any the average function that I search for as well as uh, other fu formulas that are similar. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now, number one is all it's asking for is what's the range of numbers that we want to average. And so with our cursor here at number one, I'm just going to go ahead and click in C2 and drag all the way to C9. And notice Excel went ahead and populated that range for me. And if I click OK, I get the same answer. Um, much easier, much faster. Um, I would encourage you to use the average function. All right, let's put our cursor here in G6. This time we're going to use an average function that only looks for the criteria of hamburger. So with our cursor in G6, I'm going to go ahead and click Insert Function. Here at the top, I'm going to go ahead and type in Average If and click Go. And this time it only pulled up three, but the one I want is the one highlighted, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, uh, the range here, if, you, if you're not careful, you'll select the wrong range. Um, the range here is not the numbers that we're going to average. The range here is the criteria we're looking for. And so our range is going to be the food items. So we'll click in A2 and we'll select our range all the way down to A3. And we're telling Excel, hey, we want you to look in column A and we want you to look for a specific thing. And that specific thing is hamburger. So we'll go ahead and type in hamburger. And I'm going to go ahead and hit tab. Now notice the the function builder went ahead and put quotations around the word hamburger. Now you could have began uh, manually hand keying in this without using the the function builder. Um, as you feel more comfortable with Excel, I you'll you, it'll just be natural for you to do. It won't be a big deal. Um, but if you had left out the quotations around hamburger, it's going to come up with an error message in your formula. So the benefit of using the function builder is it kind of helps you out in some of these ways. All right, our average range is where we're going to select the numbers range. So we'll go ahead and put our cursor here in C2, and we'll select all the way down to uh, C23. And so let me just do a recap of this uh, right here. We're telling Excel we want you to look in column A, and we're and Excel is like, what are you looking for? We're wanting you to only look for the line that says hamburger. 
Okay. Okay. So if Excel finds hamburger, what do you want me to do? Well, we want you to look at that number and take all of the times hamburger and find the average of that price. And so we're going to go ahead and click OK. And notice that it returns the value of three dollars and ninety four cents. All right, let's look at one other function. It's called average ifs. Now, the average ifs is a function that looks at multiple criteria. And the, the one before, it was just one criteria. But this time, we're going to look for two criterias. And so we'll go ahead and click the Insert Function button. And we're going to go ahead and type in average ifs. We'll click Go. Average ifs is uh, highlighted, so we'll click OK. Now, this time, average range is selected first. So what we want to do is click C2 all the way to C33. And so it's going to look at all of those numbers and average it based upon the criteria that we set. Now, our criteria range, the first thing we're looking for is we're only looking for items for store A. I'm going to put my cursor in B2, and I'm going to select the entire range all the way to B33. Technically, for this, all we need to get to is to store A, but we'll go ahead and select the entire range here. Um, and in this criteria, we're Excel is like, what do you want me to look for? So we're going to just look. I want you to look for store A. That's it. All right, criteria two is what? We want you to only find the items that are on the wall. Okay, not bad. So what I'm going to do uh, for criteria two is we're going to put our cursor in D2, and I'm going to select all the way down to D33. All right, so we're, you're looking at D, the D column, Excel, and the criteria is going to be only the items on the wall. So I'll type in wall, and I'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so this time the average item on the wall in store A is $3.33. Now, there are a lot of different combinations to the average ifs and, and different average um, criterias, but I just went through just a, a few basic ones for this illustration.